Alright, I'm going to set this onto... I'm going to set this onto multiply, and then set the original layer behind it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Ooh, nice. Okay, so what I did is I set, I duplicated the layer, I set the layer behind it on multiply, and then I, I just moved this back up, and they both have exactly the same mask. Um, and what that did is it fixed the edge just a little tiny bit. You see that edge? You see how that edge is ever so slightly better? Um, we don't have that uh, like little halo effect going around it. All I did was I duplicated the layer and I set the layer below it to uh, multiply. Um, and that just made it so everything that's kind of bright on the edge, because the edge is going to shine through whenever you get these um, gray areas. So this is kind of not completely white, not completely black. Uh, you'll kind of see the layer behind in those areas, and that's really where it gets ugly. So I'm just kind of, kind of, I darken all of it a little bit, uh, and that helps ever so slightly. Uh, so that's that's ever so slightly. Maybe I could duplicate this out a couple of times. Just Control J to duplicate this out a couple of times. And is that better or worse? Um, I would say that that's uh, a little bit better. So I'm kind of I'm kind of liking what's happening right there. Let's look at the layer and see if it works in context. I think I have a couple too many, so I'm just going to um, hit uh, go to them, and I'm going to hit delete. And that's a little bit better. I might also uh, here. Let's. Um, I'm going to say this is a good selection. I would save this out to a new document and just simplify everything um, by merging all of these layers behind uh, together, setting these to multiply. Again, we're left with this. I'll notice that I'm actually seeing behind this area right here a little bit. Looks like I didn't get this selection quite right, so I'm going to uh, do that as I want. I would go in further and uh, make sure everything's going right. Ooh, we're hitting 11 minutes. I don't like these to be any longer than 8. That's why I ended it earlier, and all of this is bonus. Um, Alright, so that's uh, that looks a little bit better. There's still a little weirdness happening in the edge, so one thing I might do is I might go into uh, Mask Edge a little bit further, um, and I might try to feather it. Remember that we have the multiple multiply thing below. I might shift the edge a little bit. So, um, we're kind of maintaining that edge, but it gets a little bit dark. So I'm going to press OK. And you'll notice that this is incredibly dark because we're seeing uh, this behind. I would need to go back. So I don't like this. I think I went way too far, way, way too far with the refine edge. Um, I like this a lot more, and I like this even more. I feel this actually pushes it even further, just setting it on multiply like that right there. So let me see if I'm having problems with this layer. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm actually pretty happy with this as it is. Uh, the last step to any <coughs> matching of foreground and background is to uh, match the colors. So I'm going to add a, uh, a layer adjustment, a, uh, a color adjustment layer uh, over the background. We'll just use curves. I'm going to talk about curves a lot more later. Um, but suffice it to say, uh, you can darken it by moving this down. If you go into the red uh, drop down over here, you can do things like increase the red. Uh, and and it, it gets you know a, a lot deeper than this. Uh, Curves is actually an incredibly powerful tool. Um, and oh man, I, I can't I can't say enough how much I love curves. Uh, so I'm just kind of trying to match the colors. Um, if it's uh, looking like, it looks like the foreground is a lot more yellow, so I'm going to lower the blues because blue, of course, is the opposite of yellow. Again, I'll get into that into the, uh, in the uh, color, color correction stage of these tutorials. And I'm going to lighten all of this. Uh, I'm going to lighten all of this a bit more. And let's just see if that's better or worse by turning on and off this color correction layer. It could be worse. I think it's a, it's much, much better, actually. Uh, then I'm going to close out of this, and if I bring down the opacity of this layer, I can kind of go between the before and after, but I, I kind of like that. And if someone were to show me this photograph, um, here, let's bring down the opacity of this uh, a little bit more. If someone were to show me this photograph, I would not necessarily, well, first I would say not the greatest photograph because this background is incredibly busy, um, but I would not guess this was not in the background originally. All right, so we're going to end it right there. A couple of extra bonus tips for the uh, people who stuck around. So um, this has been Jeremy Schubach with the Photoshop Expert Series. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please leave a comment uh, expressing your appreciation or your distaste. Um, 
yeah, either way, I just like comments. Uh, in the next session, we are going to be getting out of all of this selection. If you do want to see me uh, selecting here on a uh, green screen, I'm happy to do that. Please leave a comment for that. Uh, but in the se next section, we are going to uh, be switching gears, and I'm going to show you, over the course of a number of videos, how to select, how to take anything at all out of an image. Uh, we'll start with some easier examples, and then we'll get into more and more complicated examples until they're absolutely impossible things that we are accomplishing. All right. Thanks again.